Hey everybody, it's John at Fishing Hunter. It's uh, February 5th, 2019. Got out to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania today for the Great American Outdoor Show sponsored by the National Rifle Association. I uh, got there about a uh, quarter to 11 and I stayed until four o'clock. And this complex is so big, it would probably take you two days to get through the whole thing and really experience everything that they have to offer. Um, I got to see two shows in the small arena. The first one was on Raptors. Uh, the guy was doing a demonstration with owls and hawks. And the second one was Lee and Tiffany Lakoski. Uh, I'm sure most bow hunters are familiar with them. Uh, the, uh, their show was an hour, but I only stayed for 15 minutes because it started at 3.45 until 4.45. And I left at 4 o'clock because I wanted to get on my way home. The audio there, the complex, because of the PA system and the size of the, the, the arena, the echo, I had a hard time uh, being able to understand exactly what they were saying. So I, the, the video is good, but the audio is not all that great. Um, the, the show itself, you can find anything you want. There's, uh, there's a whole section of fishing. You can buy rods, reels, lures. There's uh, outfitters that'll take you on uh, uh, fishing trips. There's hunting equipment, all kinds, everything you can imagine for hunting equipment. Um, there's outdoor outfitters that'll take you uh, pretty much anywhere in the world to go hunting. Uh, Australia, Africa, anywhere in North America, Canada, Midwest, Southwest, Southeast, uh, West Coast. Um, there's a whole section of firearms, all kinds of firearms and firearm accessories. Uh, there's another section just on bow hunting. Uh, there's everything in bow hunting. You can buy bows, you can buy arrows, camo, tree stands, blinds. Um, like I said, there's uh, safety equipment. There's Everybody was selling, a couple of places were selling knives. Uh, I did manage to stop by and see uh, my friends at Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, and I uh, told them how I was often talking about their products. If you uh, watched any of my other videos, you know how much I like my Fourth Arrow Camera Arm. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the show is really big. It, it, like I said, it'll take you two days to get through the whole thing and really take it all in. But... Uh, it was a great experience, and there's about an hour's worth of video if you want to sit and watch it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you give our channel a like and uh, subscribe. And uh, check us out, Fishing Hunter, uh, the YouTube channel. And Facebook is Fishing Hunter, D-O-T-C-O-M. Have a good day. Okay, we're here at the Great American Outdoor Show in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Just going to walk around and uh, record some video here. Got lots of new trucks, rams. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> A lot of folks here today. That looks like a lot of fun. Cool. Wow. Like you 
say you gotta touch him up. Can't am. Twenty one thousand dollars. <laughs> Guns, guns, guns. See those.
going to stop this. Different birds to hunt different things. Red tails are great 
on squirrels. They're the perfect caliber or gauge if you're going to squirrel hunt. You have different things with, with uh, different birds. At the end of the hunt, whether we catch something or not, I always lower my birds down. I give a little whistle. That means it's time to go home and eat. When I blow that whistle, she's coming down. She flies in, grabs the lure, gets a chunk of meat off that. I call her up to the glove for a piece of meat. We go home, and then she gets her meal. I do the same way every time. Consistency in training is the key. This is rabbit hunting with a pair of Harris Hawks. I bet again was this season. Some of my friends hunt with dogs, and the dogs will flush the game, and the birds go in. I don't have time to work all the birds I have in dogs, so I use my children instead. It's good for them. A lot of fun catching rabbits. Harris's hawks are one of the few species that hunt more than one at a time. For instance, if I put two red-tailed hawks in the air, they will fight. Harris's hawks, on the other hand, are like coyotes and wolves. They hunt in packs or groups. Because of that, they're the number one bird used in the world today for Bathory. In fact, they breed them over in Europe. They breed them in Europe just because of that. They're very, very good at that. So you can hunt different birds on different things. I'm going to show you a different bird at this time. This bird is also a hunter, although it may not look like it. It is. I don't want you to be nervous or scared. This is Samson. Don't be nervous, folks. This is Samson. Samson is a male kestrel. Another name for a kestrel is a sparrow hawk. How many have ever seen a sparrow hawk in a while? Okay, many people have. They weigh very, very light, super light. This bird right now weighs about 90 grams. 90 grams. You say, wow, he's little. He's very little. You say, you can really hunt a bird like this? Yes, you can. What would you hunt him on? Well, in the wild, they eat a lot of insects and grasshoppers, mice and moles and moles, things like that. But when the wintertime comes and the bugs die off, they'll switch to a little bit larger prey, sparrows. Uh, but the best, the best food source we have found for kestrels is starlings. Starlings are everywhere. Most people hate them. And it's kind of micro hunting, if you will. Uh, let me throw a for instance at you. These are great birds to car hawk. You say, what is car hawking? Car hawking is driving down the road and spotting starlings on the side of the road and rolling down the window and shooting the falcon out the window. It's kind of like a legal drive-by shooting. Sorry, sorry. It is a lot of fun, especially in the off season when, I'm, when I can't have the red tail anymore uh, and the school season's over in April or May, June, July. Your summer days are long days. It doesn't get dark till 9 o'clock at night. There's no season on sparrows and starlings. And so you can, you can hunt year round with these little guys and hunt them right out the window of the vehicle, and they're very, very good at what they do. You may think it's very easy to fly a bird like this. You say, well, yeah, they're real little, they can't really attack you. I mean, it's not going to hurt you, it's so tiny. But here's the problem with a bird this size. Remember, I told you about weight control. Weight control is essential. But here's the issue a larger bird, you have more window to work with. The smaller the bird you have, the narrower the margin for error. For instance, the red tail hawk I flew earlier, I have about a half ounce to full ounce window to play with. This guy only weighs 90 grams. So for instance, if he's three grams too heavy and I take him out and let him go, he's gonna fly away. If he's three grams too light, he could die. He's too light in weight. So my window is very, very, very small. You have to really, really know what you're doing to fly a small bird like this. Now, I will say this, Samson is still learning the ropes. He's only been in captivity for about three weeks. I did not whistle for you. You're jumping the gun. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. He thinks he's in charge, and he's not. Get that? Again, the training is exactly the same as you would train a larger hawk. Weight control is essential. You have to know what, know what you're doing very well. I didn't whistle yet. I didn't whistle. <laughs> They're a lot of fun to play with. Very, very good little hunters. One thing you have to watch out for, especially when you're hunting them out of the vehicle, if you take a long slip and the bird flies quite a ways, you gotta be really, really careful. What can happen is, is a larger hawk can see this bird go down on a starling and it can come in and kill it. There's some video clips for you hunting a kestrel. As long as you 
motion for you there. Just to give you a taste of what it's like, again, out the window, right out of the air. They're very, very, very fast at what they do. This is the same type of hunt. Ducks coming off the water, this guy's flying a turf out, which is a little bit larger than a peregrine. Mixed in with the ducks are some Canadians, and I guess this falcon said, I think I'm gonna go for goose today. So he goes into a goes into a wing over straight down a stoop. This is slow motion for you. Nice headshot on the goose. Again, we'll show you a close-up. This video you can find on YouTube. It's about a 12-minute clip. We're not going to take the time to show you the whole clip, but basically it comes around, grabs a goose, and struggles for about 12 minutes, finally kills the goose and starts eating. This is over in the Czech Republic, where they hunt a lot of roe deer with eagles. There are about 40 licensed founders in the United States that hunt with golden eagles. Most of them hunt out west, or they live out west. I do know in Pennsylvania there's at least two founders I know of personally that hunt with golden eagles. You have to be very, very good to hunt with an eagle. And most of the time, people don't hunt in the east with eagles because the liability is very, very high. For instance, suppose I had a permit to fly a golden eagle, and you gave me permission to fly on your property, and I was going to hunt rabbits. And all of a sudden, I let the eagle go and we're hunting rabbits, and here comes the neighbor jogging down the road with a Yorkie. <laughs> my hunt is over, and so is my career, because I'm in bad trouble. Because what are you going to say to the judge? Your Honor, I'll buy her another one. It's not going to happen. It's over. You're done. So liability is very, very high. Uh, eagles are very, very powerful birds. That red tail you saw was just under three pounds. A golden eagle is four of those put together. A golden eagle can squeeze 1,200 pounds per square inch. Over in Kazakhstan and Mongolia, they've been doing this for generations, and we just want to show you some clips to show you what birds of prey can do, whether it's a kestrel on sparrows and starlings, all the way up to eagles on larger prey. Eagles can take foxes. They're very, very powerful birds. The first defense of that fox was to run, the second defense, when it realized it could not run the eagle, is to turn and fight. This is the last video clip I'll show you. This is actually hunting wolves. And again, they've been doing this for generations in Kazakhstan and in Mongolia. They've been hunting wolves and their eagles. They usually hunt the females because naturally the females are larger. They're taking a great risk when they fly an eagle on a wolf because if, if that eagle grabs that wolf wrong and that wolf gets a hold of it, it's in bad trouble. Bad trouble. And again, I want you to see the weight ratio between this. You've got a predator hunting a predator. A big eagle flies about 12 pounds. That wolf weighs over 100 pounds. That is a huge weight difference, humongous. Again, first defense is to run, not gonna happen. As he gets closer, the wolf is gonna turn and try to fight. We'll show you what happens. Six foot wingspan. Shows you how big that wolf is, that's a huge wolf. Second eagle's coming in, and again, for a moment, it looks like there's no way those eagles are gonna take something that large. But if you give them a minute, once they get their feet on the head, you can tell who's winning. And again, depending on how the birds were trained, notice they did not take offense to the fact they're coming right in. He jumps right off the horse, runs right into the mix. He wants to make sure the animal's dispatched. He trades the bird off the kill. If the wolf would get away and miss, then they would whistle, hold a piece of meat up, and the bird comes right back in just like it was trained to do. That is the sport. I'll show you one more bird before we're dismissed today. Appreciate your time. This is a Harris's hawk. His name is Magic. Magic is 15 years old. He was bred in captivity. They're very, very good on rabbits. This is the species that you can hunt more than one at a time. Attention to the complex, David Scalzo reports to the Cameron Street Lobby Security Desk, David Scalzo. Just going to give you a little taste of what it's like if I was to catch something with a bird of prey. Whenever your bird of prey goes in and catches something, you want to be very, very cautious that you do not rip that kill away from that bird. It earned the kill, so be very cautious going in. Many times a falconer learns how to train the bird to come to them and they figure all that out, but the bird still hasn't figured out to chase game. It doesn't know why you have it. The light bulb has to go on. It has to figure out, oh, I got it. You're the beagle. You're helping me kill stuff. That's what it has to figure out. Once that happens and they catch something, you still have to acclimate them. You're trading them off of the kill. So I'm not going to steal the kill. 
I'm going to trade them something for the kill. It's very, very important. So if this bird was following me through the trees as he normally does, I'd go through the woods, I'd kick up the brush, and I'm trying to beat to get rabbits out. If I flush a bunny, I give a game call. It's ho, 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 like Christmas time. And the reason we give a game call is because the bird may be facing that way. And I give a game call, the bird looks at me, it's coming in, it's wanting to know where the game is, and it's going to try to get it. It is a blast to be hunting in the snow, kick a rabbit out, and hear bells come, that bird goes over your head, does a wing over, hits that rabbit, you hear it squeal. Cha-ching. It is awesome. It'd be something a little bit like this. He's going to go ahead and try to hit that rabbit. Again, he's going to protect his kill. That's what he wants to do. And I'm going to trade him off the kill. He don't want me to come in and take it, but I am. Easy. And then I'm going to trade him some for this. Notice how he hopped right to it. I give him a reward and I bag the rabbit. When he's done eating his reward, I have another reward on my, on my fist. He flies up and gets it. You see, you mean he'll jump off a rabbit every time? You train it that way. They're very much creatures of habit. They'll do it the same way every time as long as you train them properly. And that's the key with a bird of prey is consistency. In fact, it's the key with any animal. In fact, it's the key with raising children or anything else. Consistency is always the key in your training. So when my birds catch something, whether it's one rabbit, two rabbits, three rabbits, four rabbits, or nothing, I always trade them, and then when we get home, they get their meal. That's the way it's always been. You say, well, why don't you just let it eat the rabbit? I mean, it caught it, let it eat it. Because we may only be hunting five minutes, and if he catches them off the bat, he'll get no more exercise, and neither will I. He needs more exercise, and so do I. So I hunt my birds a certain amount of time, and again, whether they catch one, two, or more, I always trade them off the kill, and that's how I end the hunt. If you do that the same way every time, you'll have a bird you can have for a long, long, long time. I, the friend of mine where I received this bird from, uh, the oldest Harris he had when it died was 33 years old. So you can have a bird like this for a long, long, long time and take a ton of game with it. Listen, there's a lot of things we can talk about when it comes to birds of prey. Uh, I, I kept up with two hours. All right, we got all kinds of guns, accessories. I'm just going to walk through. Build your own AR. Like that. Henry.
Say cheese. <laughs> Wanna do a demo for my YouTube channel? Sure. <laughs> you just wanna run down on how they work? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. It's a over and under double barrel 45 Colts and 410. All have interchangeable barrels, so you just take an eighth inch Allen wrench, pop it into the hinge pin here, pull that pin out, and you have over 19 different calibers and uh, over 30 something different barrels. Is it one yeah. pistol for multiple different? Yep. You, you, just, could... you just purchase the additional barrel and then swap it onto the same frame. That's cool. Yeah, so you just pop the pin back in, it's good to go. I, I saw the commercial on uh, Pursuit Channel mm -hmm. with um, uh, Michael Bain. Sure. I was curious as to whether it was just one one gun with multiple barrels. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah and then it's also got a, uh, you know, different than most other Derringers that are on the market. You've got a spring-loaded locking lever to be able to open and load the gun, as where normally you, have, you would have a lever that you have to actually swivel around uh -huh. and uh, unlock that, that. Where did you lever. unlock it at, here? Just right here on this side. Oh, okay. And it just comes right open. That's really just nice. Drop it right back down. Now, the other cool thing is that it also has a rebounding and locking hammer. So it's an extremely safe firearm because the only way to get this hammer to go down is to, do, to depress the trigger. Once that has been fired, it bounces back and locks in place. So even if you were to drop it, it cannot go off. Nice. Yep, and then furthermore, it's also got a cross bolt safety for a little bit of additional right. uh, measure there. Yep. All solid stainless steel. No questions asked warranty. Built to last. It's very nice. My uh, my channel's Fishing Hunter okay. YouTube channel. If you want to check it out, I'll, yeah. I'll post it. It probably won't go up until tomorrow because sure. I'm going to get home late. <laughs> <laughs> LASR, mm -hmm. laser activated spot reporter. Now, does this work with any gun or? Yeah, it'll work with anything that emits a laser. Because I have a, uh, a Kimber 1911. Okay. And how would it work with a? So you just get a chamber insert here, and then you'd have a, an adapter on it, um, and then it just go here into the barrel. But you will have to reset that fire. So every time you. I wondered about that. Mm -hmm. Very nice. My uh, my YouTube channel is Fishing Hunter.
Oh, okay. So if you want to check it out, I'll load the video. Probably won't go up until tomorrow because I'm going to get home late. I'm not going to be up late. Right, right. It's a yeah. two and a, I got a two and a half hour drive to get home. So yeah, yeah. So our software works with anything that emits, uh, anything you want to target with uh -huh. anything that emits a laser. So it works on any phone, tablet, or computer. You just turn on the go into the software, tell where you want it to look for hits. It's going to tell you exactly where and how fast you shot. Oh, really? Uh huh. Now is that in the in the barrel the laser? What about it? it the, is the laser inside the barrel? Yeah, it is. Or there's dedicated training pistols like this one, or the one I have right here. Mix. And it provides that resetting trigger. Oh, uh, okay. So. Now does that have a, a weight of a real gun? Yep, this has the actual weight of a Glock 17. Nice. Can I try it? Sure. <laughs> All right. You hold the camera, and I'll. I just point and shoot? Yep. How do I start it? It's got an actual trigger break on it. Oh, okay. Miss, 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 miss. Oh, come on. So we've only told the software to look in the chests on the smaller oh, targets. Okay. So you're actually hitting it. Kick. <laughs> right. Hey. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Sam, how do you say that? Sutphin. Okay. Nice to meet you, Sam. Yeah, you too. Have a good day. Thanks. Wouldn't mind getting involved in something like that. All right, All right we're in Archery Hall. Everything bow hunting. I really do want to support the local. Yeah, I do. I'm sorry? What brand is that? Uh, it's Canon HFG40. Well, that's compact. Can I'm sorry? Get, that's a good compact model. Yeah. Okay. These things slide up in here, oh, there you go. and then there's the small uh, pin. I have one, yeah. That you put in there, pull it until it clicks, and then take the knife. Snip it off. Oh, nice. And then that's, that's it. Now, how's it open on impact with the. If, if, if it hits okay. There. So you can do that. If you take this, it almost takes seven pounds to, to unload it. So that you have to find out kind of a little bit. But, but it, it just breaks catches, off the shear pin. Right, right. And it catches this. It back. And then also it Looks like you've been cutting yourself a little. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, or you can, if then you want to pull it out, it's able to pull out of anything. Like it pulls out. Okay. So you can pull it out of anything. Really nice. But this is for this is uh, for compound. These are for compound. Uh, they're 49 something, 49, 15, I think. Okay. Uh, and these are for crossbows. That's the same price. Um, and then this is the new, this is a, a larger cut. Um, 2.2 two inch. Um, okay. And then these are, I'm not actually sure what these. 
these are a little new, but basically these are the calls that will come out. This okay. is the new style that's coming out in the spring. So, oh, okay. So. Turkey hunting? Yeah, yeah. Now, do you, do you have them for regular arrows rather than crossbow? Yeah, these are for combat. Oh, okay. Yep. And then we have a show special. If you buy two packs of these, you get a free uh, box and a pack. Yep. Very nice. And this is Thorn Archery. Is that the, the business or is that? Well, these are the broad. Yeah, Thorn Archery is the broad. But what's the, what's the business name? I'm sorry? I mean, I, like if I went online to look you guys up. I'm giving you a chance to make a plug here. It should be in here. It should be their website. Yeah, there you go. Thorn Archery? Yeah. Okay. Sailing at thornarchery.com. Yep. Okay. That's an interesting idea. It'll be on my it'll be on my YouTube channel, Fishing Hunter.
But we do only have two of them left back here. We have to go away with these and talk about this here. This is our first year for this middle side. We always had the little, little one and the big one. And this is a new model. That's an idea there, huh? Insulated vomit. Lee and Tiffany Lacoste.
subscribers. I usually, a lot of times, I'll, I'll share different stuff on uh, Bow Hunters of America, and I'll pick up a few subscribers that way. 
There's an old, there's an old Humphrey Bogart movie called Key Largo. Edward G. Robinson plays a gangster named Johnny Largo. There you go. Yeah. 